Is there a crisis here in McAllen? No. No, it's business as usual for us. Net pay zero dollars, payday January 15th. And it literally says zero. Ah, suck it. Mexico will pay for the wall. President Trump walked back one of his signature campaign promises today. When during the campaign, I would say Mexico is going to pay for it. Obviously, I never said this and I never meant they're going to write out a check. But on his campaign website, he kind of did. In a since deleted memo calling for Mexico to make a one time payment of five to ten billion dollars. Senator Bernie Sanders is apologizing again to women on his staff who say they were sexually harassed by coworkers during his 2016 presidential campaign. I thank them from the bottom of my heart for speaking out. Uh, what they experienced was absolutely unacceptable and certainly not what a progressive campaign or any campaign uh, should be about. Last week, Sanders said he'd been too busy campaigning to keep tabs on his staffer's behavior. The Democratic Republic of Congo's Catholic Church is contesting the country's official election results, which gave the presidency to Felix Chisikedi. They say another opposition candidate, Martin Fayulu, is the real winner. Fayulu agrees with the church, saying Chisikedi wrangled a backroom deal with outgoing President Joseph Kabila. Chisikedi denies the claim. The church, which had 40,000 observers at polling locations, says its tally is correct. Vatican City, the world's smallest state, has its own police force, postal service, and buildings with ceiling art. And now it's getting its first official track team, about 60 runners, including priests, nuns, Swiss guards, and a 62-year-old Vatican library professor. Nel caso delle Olimpiadi, il sogno eh, che molte volte facciamo è di vedere la bandierina del Vaticano nella sfilata dei, delle delegazioni e l'apertura dei giochi olimpici. President Trump came here to McAllen, Texas today to make the case for why a border wall is an urgent national priority. He spoke surrounded by contraband, including guns that Border Patrol says were seized from legal ports of entry, undermining the argument he came here to make. They come across the border and it's a, it's a bad thing. And they drive, they just go where there's no security, where you don't even know the difference between Mexico and the United States. If there ever was a place that might help make that point, it's a few hundred yards behind me in the Mexican city of Reynosa, with a population of 600,000 people and a spot on the Mexican government's list of its 50 most murderous cities. The State Department judges the area to be as dangerous as Iraq, Afghanistan, and North Korea. I assure you that. Reynosa Mayor Maki Ortiz says that her city is much safer than that. And she likes to point out that it's still a place where foreign companies build their factories, employing tens of thousands of people. Nosotros no negamos que hay violencia, pero la enfrentamos. No con una pared, porque esa pared que está eh, eh, queriendo construir el presidente Trump no tiene utilidad. Hay otras formas que son más realistas, como el que tengan mayores recursos humanos para que cuiden la frontera, como que haya tecnología, eh, detección infrarroja, térmica. La solución es la pared que estamos nosotros construyendo aquí en Reynosa que se llama trabajo y se llama educación. Does it frustrate you the way that he talks about your city about the the wall? Lo que me inquieta es la ignorancia de las soluciones. Somos fronterizos. Nos encanta el rock y los mariachis, los tacos y las hamburguesas. Nuestras familias viven de un lado y del otro. Entonces, esa es nuestra realidad. Y generamos riqueza para Estados Unidos y generamos riqueza para México en nuestra frontera. The funny thing is, McAllen Mayor Jim Darling feels exactly the same way. Uh, we're sister cities, number one. But number two, we have friends, a lot of relatives uh, from our people live in, in Reynosa. Uh, we have 10,000 people every day walk across the bridge. We have never thought as a border as a real challenge. It's been an advantage to, to us. There's a lot of relationships. Um, what happens in Mexico, a downturn in the economy in Mexico, affects us. And we feel it directly. One of the things the president is making a point of is that 
you have a lot of violence in Mexico, including right over the border. He says it's seeping into America. Is, does it feel that way here in Macau? You, you know, there's no question that there's violence in Mexico, and it hasn't seeped across. We are the safest city in the state of Texas. According to the FBI statistics, we're the seventh safest city in the United States. And the rest of the country doesn't know that. Is there a crisis here in McAllen? No. You know, it's business as usual for us. Border cities like McAllen know exactly how big of a problem issues like crime and illegal immigration are. And they also know how important it is to their economy to have a good relationship with their neighbors in Mexico, like Reynosa. Traditionally, we've been the largest per capita sales tax collector in the state because almost 40% of our sales tax comes out of Mexico. And so that's really been beneficial um, for us in the last four or five years with rhetoric. When the president said the Mexican pay for the wall, we felt that. We felt that economically, actually. That hurt you. That hurt us. And I wrote the president and said, you know, when you say that, we're Americans too, and that hurt, that's hurting Americans, that kind of rhetoric. Um, because I didn't think he expected it. That was kind of a political um, discussion. All that's a combination that affects us directly in a real monetary fashion. We have stores closed, for instance, based on some of those factors. Uh, and so it's important that um, we recognize, and you do in Washington, it may be a, a remark that it actually has ramifications in other parts of the country. While President Trump was at the border, federal workers were at the Capitol, again. Martin Ramirez and Trisha Pasiri dibvik are air traffic controllers. Trisha is furloughed, but Martin still has to go to work during the shutdown. Neither of them is getting paid. They and other members of the National Air Traffic Control Union are trying to drop a flyer off at every congressional office. This is for you. This is essentially our ask we're asking. They're also speaking directly with members. It's so upsetting. And um, we have, I have some handwritten letters from members at Camarillo. Martin is the primary breadwinner in his family of four. So tell me about your family. Well, I've got a wife, uh, I've got two kids, I have a six and a 14 year old. You know, I've, I've been trying to shield them from everything going on, uh, but they're, they're there, they watch the news, they overhear mom and dad talking. Were y'all talking about this over the holidays? Uh, the holidays, uh, it wasn't um, as real as it is uh, now. I don't know how I'm gonna pay my mortgage, I don't know uh, how I'm gonna pay my kids' school. We've been in contact with the school, they're aware of the situation. Um, it's just, it's, it's tough. Both Martin and Trisha have some money saved. But Trisha is also trying to rebuild her home after losing it in one of the California wildfires in 2017. Our home burnt down in the Thomas Fire. So we're currently in the rebuild process. We live now about an hour south of our home facility. So our commute uh, along the coast on a small line freeway is pretty horrendous sometimes, back and forth. Their personal stories and concerns about safety and morale are their best bet in convincing Congress and the president to do something about the shutdown as it reaches a historic point. If the shutdown lasts through Saturday, it'll be the longest ever. To do such an important job that you do for the safety of air traffic, you're professionals and I have 100% faith in what you do, but you are human beings as well. There's a playbook for how this works. You go to the Hill and have polite meetings with your representative and anybody else who will let you in the door. You gather as many workers as you can and outfit them with matching shirts and colorful signs. Yeah, end it today. We need to end the shutdown. We need to put federal workers and contractors back to work. Trump, open the government. You are part of the backdrop and chant, and you make sure the cameras are there to see you yell. Border security is incredibly important, but don't you dare sacrifice our safety and security for that discussion. Open the government today. Today's event at the Capitol featured not only federal aviation workers, but also pilots, flight attendants, safety inspectors, and bipartisan members of Congress. We cannot afford to play games with airline security. There were lots of other labor groups rallying today as well. It may be a little cold out here. But it's not nearly as cold as the heart of that man down here at the White House. The AFL-CIO gathered federal workers and Democratic lawmakers near the White House. The point of all this? Make these people, and not politicians, the face of the shutdown. And there's nothing more powerful than a blank paycheck. Net pay, zero dollars, payday January 15th. Right. 
and it literally says zero. Nicolas Maduro was sworn in today for a second six-year term as president of Venezuela. Aquí estoy, listo de pie para democráticamente llevar las riendas de nuestra patria hacia un mejor destino. But a dozen Latin American countries don't think his re-election was legitimate. And he won despite the fact the economy has collapsed on his watch. Three million Venezuelans have fled the chaos, a third across the western border, in Colombia. Many who arrive can't afford to even pay for life-saving health care, let alone foot the $500 bill when the worst happens. Egresada del Instituto Nacional de Medicina Legal y Ciencia Forense aquí en Colombia. Laboré con el instituto 46 años. En estos momentos estoy pensionada. Me dediqué 100% a esta obra social. Mi obra social consiste en darle una digna sepultura a todas aquellas personas que fallecen, que no cuentan con el recurso en el momento en que mueren. Desde hace prácticamente dos años, estoy sepultando cuerpos de personas venezolanas. Por estar atravesando la crisis de su país, vienen a morir a diferentes partes Ayer falleció una bebé de cuatro meses y la familia se, se vio obligada a contactarme y no había el recurso para darle una digna sepultura. Se enfermó por una fuerte fiebre y la ingresamos al hospital de Maicao de San José, donde lastimosamente falleció, le dio un paro. Tampoco nos ayudaron por ser venezolanos, por no tener los recursos, por no tener una IPS, porque no somos de acá. Nosotros quisimos eh, ir a, a Venezuela, pero amerita mucho dinero, porque es que los militares, los guardias, todos iban a querer dinero, todos iban a querer dinero con tal de que pasáramos. Quisiera que, que las autoridades competentes, que los gobiernos competentes pusieran como que un poco más de atención a, al punto de vista de la muerte, porque es que yo estoy viendo que todo, que todo la, inclusive la ONU está brindando ayuda, pero están pensando en la salud, en la alimentación en solucionarle las necesidades prioritarias que tienen y no están pensando en la principal, que es la muerte. ¿Quién está enterrando a los venezolanos? Yo misma construyo mi bóveda y, y me di a la tarea de construir todas estas 36 bóvedas para suplir las necesidades de los venezolanos, porque es muy dura la situación para los venezolanos aquí en Río H en el momento en que me fallece un familiar. Señor Padre Celestial, Padre mío, recibe a Eliángeles Isabel en tu santo seno, Padre Celestial, y que también forme parte de tu corte angelical. Amén, amén y amén. Nació Eliangeli. Ángeli. 
Dios dice en su palabra que todos merecemos morir dignamente. Entonces, para mí es muy importante que los seres humanos tengan una digna sepultura. Video games have very special meaning to me. It's just my skill that's tested. That's all that matters is what I can do on a controller or a fight stick versus somebody else. They might be able to see better than I can, but I guarantee you they aren't paying attention to the sound the same way I am. Ha, suck it. My blindness is a condition uh, called LCA, or Lieber's congenital amaurosis. I know I don't have to heat up her food. Yeah. But... But she, you're a pushover. I'm not a pushover. <laughs> it's a genetic condition, uh, so it was, you know, just by the luck of the draw. Basically, my retinas degenerate over time. They started out terrible and then got worse, um, which is, you know, it's fine. I'm, I'm used to it. It's all good. <laughs> Oh, I hear cats. Meow. What was that? Did you want some food? I was probably about five or six when I got into video games with my cousins. Um, we had a Sega Genesis at my grandmother's house. One of my favorite games of all time is Mortal Kombat. Round one, fight. <laughs> There's just nothing like it out there. The violence, the, the, the sound effects. Sounds so crunchy. From a sound standpoint, it's, it's just beautifully gnarly. Finish her. I think learning a new video game is like learning a new instrument. I'll load up training mode. Soul of Cervantes. There you are. And find a character that I like. And usually I'll sit down with my fiance and she'll take control of the other character. Okay, so that hit me. Let me try and block it. Oh, see, and that blocked. Oh, almost jumped over it. Okay, good, got a knockdown on that. The, the work I put into it is laborious to say the least, but a low. When I was first getting into oh Mortal Kombat 10 in 2015, so he's blocking mid. I would spend five or six hours a day in training mode, learning sounds. So I had a lot more time to do it. Sidesteppable. Currently I work for tech support for a, a technology company. And nowadays, just with my limited amount of time, it does take a little bit longer. So that just clangs off of my weapon. And so I can tell that's blocked, which means I can counterattack it. You will be erased. So as soon as I hear him say, you will be erased, I have to hold block so that I won't get hit by it. Separate. I will learn each individual punch's sound, each individual kick's sound, what it sounds like when my character gets hit when they get knocked on the ground, when they get up, if they get up quickly or slowly, sounds they make their footsteps. I will just learn every facet of that character that I can and just know what makes this, this character tick, sonically speaking. And I'm sure it's different from blind person to blind person, but I perceive the world in sounds. Sounds are everything to me, from the wind chimes that guide me home when I'm from when I'm checking the mail to the sound of cars crossing the street. Those are the things that keep me safe when I'm walking around outside. Like, all of these sounds for me, that's, that's my world. You sound so happy to see me. Bark, bark, bark. I would definitely say video games are, if not just a safe space, I'd say they're almost a release from 
dealing with the world that's not necessarily made for, for blind people. Cool. I think we should, if we're gonna do that though, Kelsey, we should do it in training mode. So if she's playing, could you commentate? Okay, yeah, no, lo I love commentating. Katana. Who are you gonna fight? That'll should be... I do Scorpion or Sub-Zero? Well, do you have an easier time against Scorp or Sub-Zero? I don't know. I don't usually play them. Okay, fair. Let's do it. Cool. All right, got him with a close-up attack, but he blocked a second hit. Now she transitioned that directly into an X-ray. So much of people's issue with people with disabilities is just perception. Two projectiles, three, it sounds like. All right, quick two-hit string. Got him with a throw as he closed in. And we're into the fatality. Got the fan blades. And the Kitana death. wins. Fatality. And I feel like winning as a blind person is just blowing those boundaries of restriction back. That's down forward, up back, forward, down, down forward, down back, A plus G. Mm -hmm. Okay. And someone online who doesn't hear me mocking them for losing to a blind guy would have no way of knowing I'm blind otherwise because I can still shred them like anybody else. So down forward, up back, forward, down, down forward. Yes! There it is, there it is. Suck at people who can't do that. Oh, dude, that's totally doable. Why do people act like that's hard? 